All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about the top three most overrated BMX brands. And this could get me in trouble because some of these brands that I'm coming at are very well known and very popular brands. But just to throw some of my subscribers under the bus, they helped me come up with this list on this live stream, okay? So it's not all my fault, but I do agree to a certain extent. I also wanna to, want to throw a caveat in here before I dig into it that BMX is about freestyle and like expression. So ride whatever you want. Ride what makes you feel good. Ride what makes you feel happy. But in my opinion, these three brands are very um, overrated. Like they're just super overhyped and the, the hype doesn't match up with the value and the quality of the parts. Bottom line. So let's get right into number one, which is Colt. That's right, Colt. Now Colt is a really popular brand. Um, and, and Colt, Robbie Morales, was a team manager for Fit, broke away from Fit, created Colt, took some of the really good riders from Fit, put them on Colt, and Colt has just been growing like crazy. Everybody loves Colt, and I, I bet nobody was, uh, was expecting Colt to be on the list. But here's the thing, I, I don't know, I haven't ridden a ton of different Colt parts, but from what I have, they're not super high quality, and that's complaint number one. You're paying a premium for the brand name and for the riders that they support. And again, if you love those riders and that's your thing, great. But if you're looking for something that's good quality, good value, Colt is not it. Colt typically has very overpriced collabs. They had that collab with the Huff bike, which was a fairly decent quality bike for pretty expensive. We've got a flower grinder for $5. We've got this Colt Vans trucker hat for 22 bucks. Just, just swag and random things that Colt makes. Um, and, and yeah, just has overpriced collabs typically. Uh, the other thing is that the riders are, are overhyped. Now I have nothing against Colt's riders, okay? Nothing against them. But I, on, a, on the grand scheme of things, there are people that are doing bigger things um, and getting less recognition. Now, Colts riders are very marketable and they're incredibly smart with how they manage their own personal brand and kudos to them. I'm just saying from my perspective, they're a little bit overhyped. For example, Panza, great YouTuber, deserves everything that he has, but what goes on here is that you have someone with a crazy amount of influence marketing subpar products for a premium price. And when that happens, you've got a lot of people that are buying stuff that maybe they wouldn't buy otherwise. And they're only buying it because of the name and it's not doing super good things for people except making them happy. And that's what it comes down to, okay? I just wanted to highlight a couple of the things that I found on here that were overpriced. And let, let, me, let me take a look, let me take a look. Or not overpriced, overhyped, all right? And the biggest thing was those, um, the Huff collabs. Okay, the Huff collab tires are just absurdly expensive. $50 for this Huff tire. It's one tire with the Huff leafs on there, $50. That's insane, absolutely insane. I can't wrap my head around that. Okay, and then everything else, you know, aside from the overpriced collabs, is fairly normal priced. But the problem you're gonna run into is it is not super high quality. If you look anywhere out there on the internet, people will um, post their broken cult parts and say, wow, this is crazy. And people will say, yeah, it's cult. And so that's just kind of the bottom line there that, you know, cult is overhyped and that's all there is to it. The second overhyped one I already mentioned is fit. And so it kind of runs in the same family. You know, Robbie Morales was with Fit, he went with Colt, and now both of them are way overhyped. I do see a lot of people that, I, I think here's what's, what's happened. Okay, this is, this is again my ignorant opinion. This is what I think happened. Colt did, uh, or Fit had a really solid brand name back in the day. I wrote a ton of Fit parts, I loved Fit, I looked up to every rider, and uh, I really appreciated it, all right? But as times changed, the brand has to move towards more modern ways of doing things and, and ultimately it might not be in the best interest. And what I'm getting at is that Fit is known as a really premium, American-made, high-quality, 
um, product. Like that's just kind of the baseline of it. Core BMX, you know, all this. And the truth is their parts aren't that good anymore. I think back in the day they used to be and they used to live up to that name. But now as things change, that's not the case. And what we see with Fit is we see very expensive complete BMX bikes that just don't match that quality. These are the discounted prices before this was a $560 bike or $580 bike, okay? And so we were seeing, especially last year and the year before during COVID, way, way, way overpriced fit bikes because these bikes aren't even full chromoly. They have single wall rims. It's just they're low quality. They're priced at a premium. Now the prices have come down because I think they're realizing that people can see through that. But before they were extremely overhyped. And we also see like the, the big reason for that is people see it as a certain type of a brand image that it really isn't anymore. And so for that reason, people have a certain perspective on fit that doesn't match up to what it really is. I'm not going to, I'm not saying like there's anything wrong with that because there's a lot of like, honestly, Kink's parts aren't that great quality, but the, the prices match that if that makes any sense. They're not charging a premium for their products because they have some false brand image. They're, they're charging what the products are actually worth. And in my opinion, Fit charges way too much because they're a premium brand and the products just don't really match up. Bottom line, I had Fit shiv forks, broke them, got a free replacement for Fit blade forks, broke them, got another replacement for Fit blade forks, broke them. And so then I'm like, okay, you know, like I'm done with this. <laughs> no more. It's just not the thing. These $200 forks aren't worth it. And it, that was pretty sad to, to, sad to realize. Now, brand number three is one you've probably been thinking about. You probably, when I started this video, you knew this one was going to be on there. And that's right. This is Hyper. Hyper is supposedly a BMX brand, but if you come to their website, it doesn't look very BMX. We've got the Harry Main Premium Jet Fuel Electric Bicycle. And what I get from Hyper is, I will say, I like what they're doing in BMX. They're providing money to pros so that pros can pursue their passion. And I think that's very important. I think it's important for big brands to come into the sport and pump money into the BMX economy so that people can chase that dream. If Hyper, Haro, Mongoose, and all these super big brands that are in here um, paying riders to do what they wanna do left, BMX wouldn't be very desirable. But since you can make a healthy living riding for some of these companies, um, it's desirable to become a pro. And these companies have to do what these companies have to do to do that. And what it is, is pay very talented, high-end riders who don't ride your products to do crazy tricks, get super popular, and then sell the cheap, high marked up version of your product. And that, that's exactly what Hyper strategy is. Hyper has our Willie, J. Tui, they have all these really insane um, riders that ride their brand and then they help convert high, high sales um, for stuff that's just not like, just not very good quality. Um, look, like, let's look at Hyper's lineup, right? We, oh, look, we got, oh, the Nitro Circus Hyper, Hyper Bike. We don't even see the price. Available soon, okay. The Nitro Circus Beast is not available. Here's a Hyper Jet Fuel. Available soon. <laughs> Max Rider Weight 220. There is no way that, I know, I'm like a little over 200, I know that bike would get destroyed. But 48 spoke rims, that looks like 36. But anyway, what I'm getting at is you see our Willy ride this fully jet fuel bike and you're like, wow, I could do that. So then you go to Hyper's website or you go to Walmart and you find a fully jet fuel bike that is not even remotely similar. Like it's high tensile steel, it's, it's a pressed headset, it's got the junky front brakes, unsealed bearings, um, goofy seat, like it's just, it's just not, a thing, okay? And it drives me crazy to see this kind of stuff happen in BMX because I just, I don't know, I just want it to be like more authentic. Now, last thing I'm gonna say here is, is that the pro shop? Wait, what the hell? This is not the, I clicked the pro shop and this is what we get? Come on, come on. Okay, so what I will say here is that this stuff is good quality. This is not super cheap quality and, and like riding aftermarket hyper stuff isn't bad, um, but, but what I'm getting at is that the brand itself is completely overhyped because people 
will buy the low quality versions of the bikes and think that they're getting something better because, oh, this is what our Willy rides. Our Willy's not riding it. Um, maybe he's riding this one, I don't know. But, but what I'm talking about is our Willy's not riding like these bikes that they're selling to kids. You know, nobody's riding this hyper beast. No one, no one's doing that except if you buy it from Walmart. So, okay, those are the top, those are the three most overrated brands. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments. And yeah, let's, let's get in an argument. So, 